Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at a way to create dramatic clouds. Now, this is going to take the image that we have and really make the clouds impactful, like a pending storm or just a big billowing day. So let's see how we could do this quickly and easily. Take the existing details of an image and really make them pop. Now, I've opened up an image with some clouds in it. You can use your own. This image is okay, but it's fairly flat. The first thing I want to do is get rid of the distracting elements, which are the branches here that are just sort of spilling in. So to do this, we'll grab our stamp tool here. And what we're going to do is some clone stamping. Get a nice big brush, right bracket, and make sure it's a soft edge. So you can go ahead here and click and play with the hardness slider. Set that down to nice softness there. Option click to set a source point and then just simply clone over. That works well. Let's sample from up here and do the same thing. And by using a nice soft edge brush, you get that nice and believable. I'll often go back a few times and set the brush to lower opacity like 20% and steal some details from other areas of the picture so this looks a little more random. And by blending this in a few times with a couple of strokes, you avoid that cloned look where it looks like you just took part of the image and pasted it on the other side. So the secret is to go ahead and clone and then go back with a low opacity clone and randomly steal from parts of the photo to build up a more elaborate cloned texture. Now this is working pretty well. We're going to do a little bit of quick experimentation. I'm going to duplicate the layer by pressing Command J, which will jump. On a PC, Control J will do the same thing. And we're going to go ahead and load up our Gaussian Blur filter and punch that to a really dramatic blur. And then let's play with blend modes. Remember, the easiest way to play with blend modes is to select the Move tool and use the shortcut Shift Plus and step through. Notice there, Color Burn is beautiful. We're really getting nice skies. And these other modes are doing interesting things as well. Overlay and Soft Light are nice but I really think that color burn mode is going to do the trick. Let's just step back around and take one last look. That looks really good. Of course, it's thrown the clock tower into absolute shadows, so let's find the happy middle. I'll turn this layer off for a second. What we need to do is make a selection. One of the advanced selection techniques is the calculations command, and this works really well. I'll go ahead and choose image calculations. And what we want to do here is combine two channels to make a new selection. I'm going to take the blue channel where a lot of the cloud detail is and combine it with an inverted copy of the red channel. Now, you then just experiment with different color modes here. And what we're trying to do is get a clear separation between the building and the sky. And you may have to experiment a little bit trying out different modes, but eventually you'll find one that works pretty well. Now, hard light mode is working pretty well here, so let's go ahead and make a new channel. But before we do that, we'll try the green channel first and see if it makes a big difference. Not really, so let's just go ahead and click OK. And if we switch over to our channels palette, you'll see we have an alpha channel. With the alpha channel selected, press Command or Control L for levels, and we're going to play with this. Pull that in so the building goes pretty dark, and then pull the white slider in so the sky gets overexposed. And you see as we play there, with just a little bit of tweaking, we can get a good selection. I'll click OK, grab my paintbrush, and paint a little bit with black here just to get that nice and clean. Flip over to white and paint a little bit of that, and we've got a great selection now. Command click to load, and you see we've selected the sky. I could turn that alpha channel off and go back to the RGB channels, and let's look at our layers palette. There we go. We've got the sky selected and not the building. We could then simply add a layer mask to that layer. And you'll see what happens is that the building has remained untouched while the sky has gone all dramatic. Now, this is a great looking sky, but I'm going to tone it down just a little bit by lowering the opacity of that layer to about 75%. Now, the sky is great, but the building itself is a little washed out, so let's go after that. Let's choose Select, Reselect, 
and we'll select inverse that so just the building is selected. We'll add a hue saturation adjustment layer and put a little bit of saturation back into the building so it's a little bit more intense and matches the overall color values of the image itself. That's looking pretty good. Select, reselect, and we'll add a quick levels adjustment layer. And let's just pull the blacks in there so they pop on that tower. Open up the middle a little bit and pull the whites in so they get a little bit brighter. There we go. That's dramatic improvement. We'll click OK. And let's, in our history palette here, make a quick snapshot. So here's where we started. Here's where we ended up. And it really didn't take that much work. One of the things I always like to emphasize about Photoshop is when you understand how the basic commands work, the advanced commands are not far away. Here we combined super basic tools like Clone Stamp and the Gaussian Blur Filter with slightly more elaborate tools like layer masks. And the end result is a much more impressive image that really captures the emotion of the subject. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. My name's Rich Harrington, and be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com, where you can find free tutorials and bonus information. You'll also want to keep an eye out. We have a new book coming out that I think most of you will be interested in. Thanks again.